Mating practices in animals can be as varied as the species themselves. In arthropods, females may signal a willingness to mate with some visual display or release of potent pheromones in order to attract males. Because females bear a higher cost for mating, they must be picky with their mates, sometimes leading to strange competition between males. But what happens if a female is incapable of signaling a male she is interested in mating? And what if the male won't take no for an answer? In harvestmen, this situation is common and can lead to strange and violent outcomes. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Please like and subscribe, it helps me out a lot. Or share the video with someone you think would like to learn about weird arthropod biology. So today I wanted to talk about a very strange and sort of freaky report that was published in Nature October of last year in 2024 that I somehow missed. But this is your warning now that this is very strange and a potentially not safe for work topic. So maybe put in headphones if you don't want your kids listening to this. So the paper is called Female Phalangium Apilio Uses Fellatio to Compensate Sexual Avoidance. And this is a subject about harvestmen or daddy long legs, which is something I've talked about quite a bit on this channel recently. This is uh, a group of arthropods that I'm very much interested in lately. But Phalangium Apilio is the common European daddy long legs. And if you're not familiar with their anatomy, it's fairly straightforward. Their body is heavily condensed uh, into a pro and epistosoma, where their abdomen and uh, cephalothorax have been fused together, so different from spiders. And then they have eight walking legs, a pair of pedipalps in the front, and then their chelicerae, which are their mouth parts that they use for feeding. And the anatomy of the uh, apilio will come into play in this article. So in the Apilionis, uh, or the daddy long legs, they are kind of strange in their uh, mating practices in that they don't have a good vision of each other because they have very simple eyes and they don't pr really produce any sort of known pheromones in order to attract each other. And I say this uh, with a qualifier that we don't actually know that much about daddy long legs biology. They're generally a very ignored group of arachnids uh, so a lot of this is kind of what we think happens, but there's not a ton of research on their mating practices. But generally speaking, the male and the female uh, Apilianes will bump into each other kind of randomly uh, in nature, and they will either mate or the female will attempt to fight off or avoid the male. The researchers studying these uh, Phalangium Apilio decided to collect a bunch of males, males and females and put them into cages together to see what their mating practices would be and what the females sort of mating avoidance strategies were. It turns out that Apilioni's mating behavior is exceptionally violent. So the female doesn't necessarily want to mate with the male, but the male necessarily wants to mate with the female in order to boost his sort of evolutionary fitness and sire as many children as possible. The female doesn't necessarily want this. Uh, she only needs to really mate once in order to produce a lot of eggs, whereas the male might have to mate multiple times in order to successfully father children. This sort of competition between the males and females leads to a significant amount of violence between them, uh, frequently resulting in the female's death and occasionally resulting in the male's death. So this is a little strange because the females are considerably larger than the males, but the male is not averse to straight up dismembering and eating the female if she attempts to resist his approaches. So the female will sometimes fight back. The female will sometimes attempt to kill the male or uh, avoid him in some other way. So uh, dodge him, run away from him, bob away from him. If you've ever tried to collect a Pilianis, they are very nimble on their feet. They can move very, very quickly. But one of the interesting things that was found, especially after they had been exposed to different males multiple times, what was found is that female Apilianis do have another mating strategy, which is to engage in fellatio with the male. So instead of mating with the male, she will uh, use her mouth parts uh, and her mouth in order to, we're not entirely sure, stroke the male's penis. Uh, we're not sure if she's feeding on some sort of nuptial gift or a secretion, or if she's merely attempting to satiate the male's sexual drive. But a number of females engaged in this. 
uh, fellatio. And it seems that this oral sex was used the more unwilling the female was to copulate. If she had copulated with the first male, she was more likely to use uh, oral sex with the second male. And, or if she was just straight up uninterested in mating with the first male and she would offer oral sex, then she would offer oral sex with the second male as well. And this gets a little weird because the Apillionis don't have, uh, you know, what you would think of a mouth or lips or a tongue. They have these, which are chlycerae. So they are like little crab pincers at the at the uh, front of. These are homologous to something like the second antennae in uh, crustaceans, but they're basically the mouth parts of the arachnids. So in spiders, these would be fangs, but in harvestmen, they're little pincers. She would use this and her mouth opening, which is behind these chelicerae, in order to stimulate the male penis. And it is thought by the researchers that this is an active avoidance strategy because by getting into position to do this, she makes it impossible for the male to forcibly mate with her. To understand how this makes it impossible for the male to mate with the female, we have to go back into the Apillionis anatomy. So this is what the Apillionis looks like if you see it out and about. Uh, you have the eight big walking legs and the central body mass. If we look at this Apillionis from the side, though, we can kind of examine their genitalia structure. So unlike insects, which have the uh, genitalia at the end of the body, Apillionis have the genital opening on the second abdominal sternite, so around this area here. More importantly they face forward. So with a lot of insects, the genitalia will usually face down or back. But with the Apillionis, the genitalia are kind of in, in the central mass and they face forward. So in order to do this fellatio on the male, the female will have to lower herself in order to get under him. And he cannot insert into her genital opening. So this is both possibly a way to to sate the male sexual drive, but also to make it impossible for him to physically mate with her. What the researchers found was that total copulation time for the female was negatively correlated with the total number of fellatio acts that she performed. So if she, it seems to be that if she is uninterested in mating with the male, it is much, much more likely that she will offer this sort of oral sex as compensation and as a mating avoidance strategy. And this was seen not just in one female that was doing it a lot, but across multiple females. And the more hostile the female was to the male, the more likely she was to perform these oral sex acts. And oral sex acts are known in the animal kingdom, uh, but this is just a little weird because we're talking about a relatively primitive arachnid, so that's not something that we would necessarily consider. We don't know why the females do this, uh, if they're, as far as if there's some physiological benefit to her. We do know that females tend to uh, have shorter lifespans the more eggs that they lay. So this could be a trade-off when she is not mating, therefore she doesn't have any risk of laying eggs, so it can prolong her life. It is also possible that species that engage in this fellatio are uh, getting some sort of nuptial gift out of this. In a lot of arthropods, the males will provide some sort of nutrient or caloric gift to the females, uh, usually through some sort of gland secretion in order to help with supplying the eggs with enough nutrients in order to be laid and harvestmen do provide these nuptial gifts but not all species do so it's kind of a weird thing we're not entirely sure what the key driver of this is other than an unwillingness of the female to mate so i will link this uh, article in the description if you're interested in reading it it's not very long and i'll talk to you guys later